I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to return to our data, data engineering playlist and we're going to look at random numbers in .NET. And so we're going to use the random function to generate some numbers and uh, have a little bit of discussion around how random those numbers are and uh, some gotchas that you might run into. So without further ado, let's get to our random numbers in .NET. Okay, so for this example, I've just opened a console application in vb.net in uh, .NET Core 3.1 and uh, it comes with this little hello world on it. Um, so you can hit F5 and you can see it spits out hello world at the top. And then it says you can press any key to continue. And, uh, and so we're going to get rid of that and uh, we'll take a look at uh, making some random numbers here. So the first thing we'll, we'll do uh, when we want to create a random number uh, in uh, vb.net is we can use, uh, you know, <clears throat> dim a new variable as a new random. And then uh, from there, we can use that to generate numbers. Um, and uh, so uh, what we could do next is grab ourselves an integer um, variable. So we'll, uh, we'll create int first as an integer and we'll set that to rnd.next and, uh, and then we'll set in, uh, in, int second as uh, rnd next as well. So what happens is the uh, the random number generator, it, it seeds the first one according to some variables apparently like the computer clock um, and then it it allows you to, uh, it generates numbers one after another after that um, that are different. And so um, I could write out a console, console.write line my random numbers and then I could put the first and second integers and that'll tell me what I got uh, for my random numbers. Um, and so uh, if I hit a five there, um, it'll start it out, start the uh, app and you'll see at the top it generated these two big um, integers uh, which were which were random and so um, that's great and we can run it again and uh, and we can see what happens there as you can see it gives two different random numbers and um, as I understand it these are these the randomness of these numbers is good enough for most um, scientific based um, <clears throat> pursuits uh, if you need even more randomness, I think there are ways of doing that. Uh, but this method will satisfy most purposes. Um, you can read more about that. Um, so you can also specify a range. So we can put R and D next, and then we can put the, the lower uh, part of the range and the upper part of the range. Uh, and it'll generate two numbers in between, uh, or a number in between the ranges. In our case, two different numbers. Uh, 187 and 350 and uh, um, that's an important thing to to note uh, we could do you know 10 10 to 20 and 30 to 40 and that would also give us uh, some random numbers between those two ranges now one thing to note is that the lower range is inclusive and the upper range is exclusive uh, so if we put 20 in there it's not gonna ever generate 20 um, we'd have to put 21 uh, in as our uh, as our upper range, uh, but the lower range is inclusive, so you could end up getting tens some sometimes. Um, so a lot of people like to put you know the upper range plus one uh, when they want to specify their set. Now, one thing that I did read uh, was that based off of the uh, setting of the seed. Um, it might be possible to to get um, consecutive numbers of the same uh, of the same type uh, if you um, did something like a loop and you generated them in very quickly in order um, but I was not able to see that behavior um, so if we do uh, for i as integer equals 1 to 1000 and we do our first and second 
uh, integer um, assignment um, as the next numbers, um, we we don't really see, or at least I didn't notice any, um, they would have to hap happen so quickly um, one after another that, um, that, that in order to generate the same random number. Um, and uh, I never actually noticed that in my, um, in my experiments, but uh, you might want to uh, account for that, or if you do see that, that could be the reason why. So as you can see, I went through a thousand uh, random numbers uh, following that uh, um, methodology, and it does not appear that there are any duplicates uh, in in the output, um, or if if it does if it did happen, it was very rare. Um, and so you can see there's my thousand uh, rows, which uh, eventually ran out of console space there. So um, so it appears that uh, everything seems to be fine. It generated all kinds of uh, crazy numbers in between, uh, you know. Uh, zero and and uh, the upper range and so that is exactly what we uh, want to see and uh, as I mentioned uh, we may want to look at the lower and upper ranges uh, of our of our uh, randomization here our, our range um, such that we you know put 21 uh, if we want to make sure that 20 is included in our random numbers um, so we might do that um, just by going to the upper range in our argument and changing it to the upper range plus one and that'll ensure that um, our uh, upper and lower ranges are included in the output and uh, so we could do that as I showed you there. So if I run that one you can see um, there's two numbers they are in between the various respective ranges I can't run it enough times here to check and see that we do get a 40 in there, but uh, that is the way it's supposed to work. And uh, that is how you do random numbers in vb.net. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do random numbers in .net. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Uh, click the bell when you see the bell. and. Put any questions or comments you might have in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.